got Chris Nordine here experimenting with the glass. He's going to be highlighting a tool for us in just one second. But look at the way he's stretching it in this moment. Folks, welcome to the show. This is the gathering point. That is molten glass, 2,100 degrees. We are here at the Glass Academy. We got Chris Nordine on the pipe rocking the Red Wing Santa hat. What's we got up? Marcy back here with her uh, Christmas sweater on. She's going to be bringing some glass over here for All a little right. collaboration on this tool explanation. Hold. Start the, of the, the show. The tool for today is the trusty old butter knife, guys. The it's, butter knife? It's very diverse. Check this out. It's used for all different types of sculptural added bits. Watch this. Holy heat. Now watch this up close. Whoa. Look how cool that looks, guys. That's watch this. That's some serious texture. Oh, the feather. That is something that's a pretty cool technique. Check it out. That totally looks real feather-like. And the gist of it is, is that the butter knife was around a long time. When was it invented? Before glass blowing was using it, and we've adapted to using the trusty old butter Ooh. knife. Fancy. And this thing is a really good. She's going to bring me another bit. Let's do another butter knife technique. Watch butter this, guys. Butter knife special coming in. We'll put one right here. Now watch this. Butter knife. Let's see it. Ooh. Two crosses. He's got a spiral in the middle. It looks like he's making either a rose or... A Cinnabon. It's definitely a 100% mall style Cinnabon. <laughs> Check it out, really nice. Crystal clear. But this is a, an extension of a tool that we've used, which is a giant butter knife. If you really wanted to cover a whole loaf of bread with butter at the same time, you could use this taglia. But I could lather some cake with icing with that thing. But a lot of times you need something if you're going to be carving a little face, if you're going to be carving sculptural entities on any type of a solid work or hollow work glass. It's really nice to use the butter knife. Let's do another one. Uno mas, as they say. That is hot and juicy. And here comes Chris with the butter knife. All the way down, a little push up. We've done this on many a mug handle before. Here come the tweezers. This is experimenting with glass, folks. And right now what we're doing is we're starting the show off with a classic, what does this tool do? Marcy, what do you think about the butter knife? I think it's quite jingly. Jingly? Listen to it. Dashing <laughs> through the snow. Oh boy. Hustle, boosty, <laughs> over the hill we go. And the bells. It's used for many things, guys, but it's definitely a super cool tool. Very diverse. It's unbelievable, and I love it because you can really get into those tight spots when you're sculpting pieces. And we've also used it for uh, cleaning up the punties when you're using the torch and you knock the pieces off and you're over on the knockoff bench. It's used for that as well. But there's definitely many, many uses for the butter knife here in the glass blowing studio. So tonight's feature item, you remember it, for show number 142, the butter knife. Beautiful. All right, all right. And folks, what's happening? This is, as I mentioned, the gathering point, and we're here live right now on multiple different streaming services. And we'd love it if you would spread the word about our feed to everybody out there and all your social media uh, presences. They but, do. Uh, they do that by S H A R E E. e. The feed, guys. Share. We're not supposed to say it. Tech people say we shouldn't. The the bots out there know when you say the S H A R E word. So just pass it on, you guys. Tell yep. them about how sweet the show is and 
Let's get to the board. Let's get to the board. First thing we'll say is we've got three mics tonight, folks. We've got an upgraded mic system. Marcy's on a mic. Say okay. what up from all the way over there. Chris is on a mic. I'm testing, on a mic. testing, testing. And if you we can hear us that. amazing and everything's working great, send some emojis and some thumbs up and some little slug images if you got them. And we've got the carry connection right here, folks. That's right. Thanks, Carrie, for the Red Wing Santa hats. We got them on tonight. Oh, yeah. Super cool. So we're going to be getting into this show we've got. This is a pretty cool one. This is the final show before Christmas. Oh, yeah. And I remember this time last year, we're at show 142. So it's definitely, we're starting to cycle back through things, and we're creating new products as the year goes along, and it's been a pretty cool ride. Uh, but we've got three custom orders tonight. A little bonus snuck in because it's the Christmas show and we got to do a little extra action. Uh, but we're going to start with the warmer upper. Chris hasn't been blowing all day. Marcy and I, and even Brandon, our third assistant, has been in here and he's been working all day. So we're warm. Chris is going to get warm in a second. We've got a custom slug, and now I'm not going to say who it's for or who it's purchased by until we're completed with it because it's going to be say, really cool. Hey? Shh. It's a gift. Zoom in on that. Oh, yeah. Shh, everybody, it's a gift. Then we've got a classic artist choice, beautiful one of a kind piece. That's me. And the only requirements are that it is one of a kind, and it's for Tanya. And she's chosen Chris tonight to make her uh, artist choice piece. And then number four is going to be, and I'm not going to say who this is for just yet or who it's from, but we're going to make a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. And that is, unlike the drawing, that is when we add the red ornament, it bends over and hits the floor. Right here in front of your eyes, guys. Watch it happen now. Well, there goes the tree. It's up. It's growing. It's kind of not the most fluffy tree. It's got a few branches. It's got a few green needles protruding. How many of you all have seen all of the Charlie Brown goodness out there? Let's see that in the chat. Here comes the ornament, the heavy ornament that the poor little tree can't withstand the weight of. Boom, there it is. That's no glass ornament. That thing must be made out of metal. There it and is. And then you got a few other little minis here and there. So that's the plan for tonight, folks. The other thing to point out right here is this is gonna be our BC, folks, our bench cam. Tonight, we've had this camera as the Marver cam before. We've had it as uh, a miscellaneous camera, but it's a stationary camera with great quality that when we get to some detailed shots on the bench, we're gonna switch it to the bench cam. Nice. So you let us know what you think of that. So we're gonna get into it. All right, so I guess I'm doing the uh, warmer upper, right? The warmer upper, that's right. <coughs> we I have, think. just a reminder, shows number, one four, number 140 was Glasket ball, guys. 141, 142, 143, and 144 are just tool descriptions. And then 145 will be the long drop. Long drop. Competition. And Marcy has been practicing the long drop. It's true. Because she is ready to win. She's feeling <laughs> like her name hasn't been on very recently on the GA Cup, which is our spectacular AKA styled Stanley Cup GA Cup that we engrave our names on for every competition on the zeros and the five shows. So the 140s, 145s, 150s. So keep that in mind, guys, because it's pretty spectacular. That's right. That's a lot of Good luck. Good luck. So let's You're get to it. That's you in like all. three you, days. That's you in gotta three get weeks, to warm folks. Up, man. I think I made like probably like 3,000 drops. That's in three weeks from now. You got plenty of time to practice. That's right. You better practice up, sis. I have been practicing. Oh. Now, would you get warmed up already? Yeah, all get right. warmed up already, Two. folks. I'm going to give you a gentle zoom in. You know, 630, these products go live, but we have all one of a kind, only available in this color scheme. Uh, unless purchased via custom order, sweet trees for your last purchase before Christmas, folks. And if you look really close over here, Marcy is suggesting you send us some emoji love on whatever uh, service you're watching on right now. 
We made a lot of signature ornaments today. We've run out multiple times. They're a big hit. They're on the website. That's oh, yeah. our blue thread ornaments. Blue ribbon ornaments, to be specific. I think they're blue thread, aren't they? Or are they blue ribbon? Blue ribbon? Blue thread. Thread? It's a thread oh. of blue. What did you think about putting those threads on, Marcy, today? I was honestly getting them pretty dang tiny. Yeah. Really tiny. Some are a little thicker, but honestly, I had a lot of fun doing it. And not that tinier is better or worse, but tinier as a glass blower, from a glass perspective, is more difficult. Definitely so. At so one point, I got made. so thin with one that it threaded all apart and then stuck again and then kept going, and it was, yeah. It was wild. That was fun. That one was fun. So what are you thinking over there, Chris? I'm thinking about getting warmed up. What is the warm rubber? How are you know. going to get warm? I got some great ideas, guys. Oh my I gosh, she's got on. great ideas. Who would have like thought? Looks like size one white. I'm not really going to tell anybody what I'm making because nobody knows, and I'm just not going to let it out of the bag. Just let just me know what it. you need. All right. Folks, so, if there's anybody new to the show out there, let us know in the chat. We've got our beautiful tech support over here. Say hello to them, folks. They're doing amazing. Very charismatic. They're spacing out hard right now. And they're uh, they're watching comments. They're making sure everything's rolling smooth for us, and we appreciate it because obviously we couldn't be doing what we're doing, blowing glass in front yeah. of this virtual uh, cross world platform if it weren't for them. So always yeah. we ask for a little love in the chat for them. Hit all the little button things for all the stuff if you can. Uh, we really appreciate it. it. Helps with the numbers and whatnot. And whatnot. Chris has got a couple not. coats of white on here. Marcy, what makes white? How do you get white glass? Well, glass starts with the base of clear, so which is silica sand. Um, and the specific type we're working with is lime soda. So you add a little bit of soda ash. Is that like uh, sassafras or cherry soda? No, no lime it's soda. Not slightly quite the different, same. but really? less sugary. What is this? But soda ash is actually the soap. Hello. <laughs> Great what she's getting to the good parts, guys. I got to call it. Okay, that's good. Label of steak, Evelia. Did you have anything else to say, Marcy? Yeah. Um, so Blow. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> good. But soda ash Blow. is... Blow. No. Seriously. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. But soda ash is the burnt ashes of wood that were soaked. Uh, so very similar to the uh, soda ash you would use in tie dye and clothes in order to make it adhere a little better. It's kind of like a binder within the glass itself. That's a great way of putting it. Yes, but unfortunately, soda ash and silica sand uh, are too hot or melt too hot. Um, so it's more like 3,000 degrees. Mm. So instead, we add a catalyst, which is actually just a dash of limestone, so that it brings that temperature, that melting temperature down from like 3,000 to more like 2,000, so we can actually work with it. I will take a green ball to the bottom of this, or a green little bit, like a stem bit. That might have been the most detailed explanation of the actual material itself we've had in quite a while, folks. So give Marcy a round of applause for knowing her knowledge and. That's why she's such an amazing teacher with the classes that we teach here at the Glass Academy on the weekends and on Friday nights because she knows the glass, she loves the glass, she wants to learn about it, and you all can ask her questions here on the show or in a live class and learn more about the glass pretty much as much as you like. Yeah, but I didn't even finish my part though. Oh. So in order to add color to any of the glass, oh, that's right. we have to add different minerals and elements and metals. So in order to get white, uh, typically that is used is tin. Ah. There you go, folks. She's going into the green over here. This is the watermelon. Watermelon? And this is actually one of my favorite colors right now. And I will say some of the trees we have I think on I gave you too much of a big are bit. made out of the watermelon. Oh, and that's the first time we've ever done this. Because it's a brand new color for us for this past year. So that's going to be an option that we haven't previously had, and that's not available on the website until now. And here goes a beautiful, a nice watermelon. Call that a bit, folks. B-I-T. 
That's an application of glass. So once you have your starter bubble, which is what Chris was working on here, and I still don't know what he's making yet. But once you have that starter bubble, then you apply different pieces onto the glass. And that's what glass is, is that application, that building of a final piece. And here he's shaping up some sort of... I'm gonna take a, a little, Something little bit on that when it cools off, and then we're gonna put a foot on it. What could this be, folks? Let's hear in the chats. What are people thinking this is going to come along to? That's a white, kind of looks like Actually, a Actually, Marcy, a I'll go for a, uh, a red bit on it. Uh, you know what? Let me see. Clear, red, white, what do you want? And that's a green ball we've got there. And Chris is now thinking about yeah, the color. Yeah, that's going to be good. I'll take a red red bit for a foot. Same size as that last one you did. That's what I was One good say. coat of red, and then heat it up and bring it over to me hot pulled out the footing tool, so he is going to be going with some sort of foot on here. It's going to be something standing on this foot. It's not going to be a back massager. Yeah, that's for sure. It could be a footed back massager. Set it on the table when you're all done. I've certainly, uh, anyway. Pardon me. Here comes Marcy. She's going for the red, folks, and that red's the exact same color as her sweater right now, her Christmas sweet sweater with the jingle bells on it. But, you want to uh, know what's really hard? You will see that that red, as soon as... Finding the same color black or red in anything. Yeah, there are a lot of different awesome. reds. Ready? Yep. Here we go. Over the top. Somehow they keep rotating to cover up my angle. There it is. That's hot. Way to catch it. You've got to make that cut super fast. You don't, that glass is going to drip down over the edge of where he's about to do this move. Look at the glow on that glass. And look at the thinness on the end. You see it glowing more on the edge where it's not touched by the wood. That's a nice, big, crispy foot. It's actually really difficult to get a nice footed tool foot out of red because red is so stiff. So the fact that Marcy brought up enough glass and hot enough, Beautiful. and then Chris was able to hey, handle that and wrangle it in. They do call him the wrangler from time to time. Wrangler. And make that a perfect symmetrical foot is pretty nice, pretty darn nice, folks. This is, I've never made anything like this, and I literally just came up with the idea like, eight minutes ago, so it's going to be amazing, and this piece is going to be for sale. That's right. And it will come with a matching pair. Oh. So if that gives anybody a hint at what it might be, put it in the feed, you guys. Let us know what you think you might think there is a pair of something here. What is it? So, all right. There you go, folks. A pair of something. Here comes a beautiful punny from Marcy. Stick it on, right on center. They're lining that up. See those pipes, nice and even. A little bit of cold metal. That breaks off. Marcy's taking it away. It's a beautiful Woo, break. Creepy. The handoff. I'm gonna take a white bit, Marcy. How big? Uh, half the size of that foot you gave me. Half so the size of the foot. Ping pong ball size. Ping pong. I got a question for uh, tech support over here. Were we prepared to sell pieces live on the show this week, or are we waiting until next week to start that? What? Judging by the look, we're not prepared to sell these pieces on the show tonight, but in the near future, as we have mentioned, folks, Michelle will explain that. I think we just forgot about it. Kind of. Well. I mean, it's just so in the future one, messaging, wait, right? Wait, which one? Uh, Big the or little? The right one. Two coats. In the future, folks, soon enough, we're going to be able to purchase these pieces live on the show after you've seen them made. And if Chris says he's making a set of two, then that means it's going to be a set of two. But for this show here tonight, we're going to let these ones cool down. We'll have them available for you next week uh, on our show. Last week, we had nothing available for purchase because everything was custom. And that uh, could have been the... Uh, the option tonight. We do have three pretty uh, sizable custom orders, so we're going to see how the timing goes. Hopefully, we'll have time for a giveaway at Got the two end. Two coats there. on it. 
Yeah. Chris does love to get real warmed up. Right on top? Yep. So here we go, a nice white yeah. application right on top. You see that color glowing. It's really uh, tough to pick up on the camera at over 2,000 degrees, but once that starts to cool down and starts to take shape, you'll see it a little bit better, but still even, it's always tough to pick up that electric white. It's so bright. It's one of the nicest colors to work with, and here we go. Look at this move. It's going in with the tweezers. I think I know what he's doing. You think you know? Yeah. I think I do too. I haven't had a chance to look at the chat, but I know someone's probably guessed it. Putting cut marks. I think he's not cutting all the way through. It's kind of like the trees. They're not cut marks, they're crimps. Now he's pulling it out, too. That's right, it's a Christmas candlestick. Guys. Christmas candlestick holder, folks. Yep. It's got a nice wide base to it, too. Big nice. time. Really hold a nice tall candle. Oh. What? Somebody out there is curious, Marcy, where did you learn how to blow glass? Well, I actually didn't realize this could even be a job. Nope. <laughs> for the entirety of my life until college, in fact. I was at Kent State University, and I was going to be a fashion design major and become the fashionista of the world. Something like that. <laughs> but unfortunately, the program chewed me up and spit me out and I was literally crying in the art school's guidance counselor's office, and I fell back on the art program as a whole. So I had to take a bunch of intro to different medias, which was, was drawing, painting. Ceramic? Ceramics, metalworking. Ooh. All right. Me and I'm printing. Gonna but need some green. Green? Green okay. leagues, three green. of them. Oh, okay. But I also had to take an intro to glass blowing. Then she stumbled across the glass. glass Academy. And now I'm here, and they're stuck with me. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for Jenny Nordine, my sister. She's going to be watching us on the show for any comments. All right. I can't hear them over here. And Jenny out there somewhere. I know our grandparents are watching somewhere, too. They usually log on around 7, both the Nordine and the Pusinski side. After this warm up, we got to do the uh, uh, what's going to be on the featured table, right? That's right. That is a long warmer upper, but we're at 615. That means 630, folks. We'll These take pieces multiple that are leaves on off our that giant bit. Exactly. Put a bunch of leaves on this. One coat will be good enough. Um, you sure? Are going to be available. Let's get the end. 630, too. you know it, and we've been talking about it. I mentioned it a couple times via the internet at certain points this week that we're going to be having these individual one-of-a-kind trees available uh, for purchase tonight. And we've got multiples up so that you can purchase Ready maybe you are. one, okay. two. The first person to purchase will get the one on the table. And after that, we make them to order, which if you've watched our show or you've purchased from us before, you know how that goes. We love the opportunity and the challenge to make something as similar, but also handmade and having its own characteristic as the first piece you saw. So we will make those trees to order. And like I said, they're all totally new, never been seen before, never been put on our website or in the gallery. And there's one beautiful leaf. He said he's going to be putting about 25 leaves on this. Just three so with some perfect. holly. This is one heck of a warmer upper here, Chris. Well, Are you feeling warm? I needed to get warm. You'll be making the giveaway too. Second one of the set, perhaps. Look at that white glowing. Almost can't even tell what's going on. What are we doing? Okay. Here comes leaf number two. He's letting that one free hang in the air. He did say the words holly, which we recently did a piece for a chalice and snifter collector of ours, Sharon Wash. And we did put a couple leaves and some holly on that. And it turned out so good. I remember Chris seeing it in the morning. He was really surprised and blown away by the way that red was so electric on there. And it really did look like a set of leaves and holly. Holly and berries. 
yes. I guess uh, considering we are doing a huge piece for the warmer upper, I'm gonna take a pass on the third leaf and I'll come show you guys these trees. And we've got, just to show you the display in a hole, these are, like I keep saying, one of a kinders. And let me explain to you what's different about them. Number one, this guy's the watermelon Ready? green. It's a mix between transparent and opaque, but this is the kind of green you would find in the forest, folks, with just a hint yeah. of snow on the top. Number two here has got that watermelon, but we've got dots of the granny mixed in. And look at the way, I love the way, you'll see this on another couple trees, the way that those dots swirl up and bend and twist over each other when you're making them the tree way. Number three, the clear multi-colored ornament tree Take with the snowy berries. base. That's a first okay. ever in the history uh, of Glass to put them on with Academy, the bit. number three. So they're a little bit bigger. These are all on the website, folks, glassacademy.com. Go to the Gathering Point product page. Number four is crystal clear three-tier with the star on the snowy base. That one's incredible. Number five, you've got Not watermelon too big, with perfect. red ornaments, and that is the only mini trees that we have uh, made with ornaments thus far. Number six is a huge one of a kinder. There's no replicas of that sweet baby right there. Four-tier watermelon. Beautiful. Eight, we've got snow on a mini tree. Coming up to number nine up top, we've got our granny apple with gold specks swirled into the tree. Ridiculous. Number 10 is our only arrow tree on the table. Number 11, we've got a deep pine tree green. And then the final four Ready? here, just to get Harvard through them, I'll get back to the, the, the glass door here. Uh, we've got another one with ornaments. That's our uh, small tree. This one is a black and gold tree. That's a first ever. Totally unique. You got granny with ornaments and a lemon uh, yellow green. That's a lime green transparent with snow tree. So folks, if you want more details on any of those, if you want to see the heights, we've got the ruler over there on those. There's beautiful pictures of them, Heat it up. there's prices, and there's the names and descriptions of them on the Glass Academy website. That goes live in about four minutes here. Chris just put one berry on there so far. And I'm using my old trusty featured tool. The butter knife. The butter knife, guys. So we'll go into those in more detail. If you want any specific number, you want close-up shots on, please let us know in the chat, and we will yeah. relay that information along and get it to you. But uh, seriously, so one of a kinders. We aren't. Okay. We can't possibly have that many options on our website at one time. It's not feasible. So if there's something that you like, and you think you may want it, even Ready? next year you think you want to add to your collection, I might suggest locking it down now and making sure you've got that one of a kinder because unless it's a custom order, we're not going to be making any more one of a kind trees this year, folks. Get so the present. Get it. You the gotta present? get it. Huh? You gotta get it, man. Who's going for berry number three? Berry here. number three for the finale, and then we'll do a little stamp. Two. Yeah. Uh, where do you want the stamp? Uh, we'll bring it over and I'll stick it on right here on the bottom here. You see, he's sticking it on the opposite side. We like to have those stamps slightly hidden. Actually, he's doing a third red berry first. We like to have those stamps slightly hidden, but also when we were making tumblers today, it's really nice having the stamp, in our opinion, on the side. It's kind of a signature of approval. You can notice uh, what it is. You know where it's from, what the deal is with it. But having it on the back side of a piece is nice. I was making some brandy snifters that it really looks professional. It looks clean. It almost looks like... I mean, so many liquors, there's the stamp of approval, so I think it goes hand in hand with drinking beverages, but you all know the Glass Academy stamp as something that uh, signifies what we're doing and how we do it, handmade pieces. This is just giving the glass a little touch for good measure. Here goes that GA stamp.
How many of you all saw the interview that Brent and I did this past Sunday, folks? We started it on our three streaming services and then we brought it over to live scale for the in-person uh, special. And the table is live, folks. Confirms with tech support. It's 6.30. The website is live with all of those one-of-a-kind trees. We said six of each, I believe. And look at that. Imagine burning a Christmas green candle out of that thing. Oh yeah, and having another one right next to it with leaves to the outside. Mm. I think that's a pretty nice bright red and white and green. I love it. Beautiful. Beautiful piece. All right, I see some comments here. Where are Folks you taking have this from? What? The show. Where are you taking it from? Taking a four. And where are you picking it up from? I'm just gonna like try this. Because um, I don't think you'll be able to put it away that way. I think if you use the claw, you could grab it right under there with these big leaves and put it away on the foot. Okay. The the uh, the regular claw, yeah. So they're thinking about uh, how to get it away because this is a not necessarily a super delicate piece, but it doesn't have a top. You can you can't lay it down on the lip because it's uneven up there. So. They're talking about the way that they're going to knock it off. They're going to carry it away. Chris is putting a little water on the bottom here. And yeah, Sunday's Q&A is available uh, on Facebook, on Go Twitch, ahead, and on YouTube. Squeeze you up can here. see. Just like that. There you go. Beautiful. Yep. Nice grab. You got it. And away she goes. Grab the door. Chris is going to grab the door for we're going into number four with the red dot. That interview on all of our Glass Academy product and a little history of the Glass Academy is available. You can nice. find the link on our social media. All right. And maybe we and post the link of that Q&A at some point. You guys got the link for that? Working on it, awesome. All right, guys, that was pretty nice. I'll keep in mind that sweet warm rubber will be for sale. The last of the Christmas action this year but uh, I will make a matching pair to it, so when they're sold online for the Anila reveal, it'll be a set of two for your kitchen or your dining room table. All right. Now that we're warm, it's Now Dixter. that we're warm, beautiful. All right. Marcy's got the camera. Let's take a look at the board, folks. Of the five pieces, we've got one done here, and it is products are live on the website so maybe we just go back over the table one more time here before we start up our next piece I spent a lot of time on the first ones but maybe if you go 15 down you could spend some time on those nice ones yeah check it out check out number 15 guys these are all amazing trees that Jake's made this whole week and they're all really cool one-of-a-kind trees we will repro re be reproducing a small limited amount of each one of them but just like we said they're all one of a kind but darn close this one's got some beautiful christmas ornaments on it uh, this one has got the gorgeous iridescent amber we've got a, a different green tree here with the ornaments on it this beautiful got a lime pine tree uh michigan pine look with some snow on it which is amazing Kinda number 15 is the good looking frosty mountain dew yeah, these things are really, really um, sharp. A frosty Mountain Dew, but this definitely has a beautiful swirl on the bottom. They all have the GA stamp on them. I'm thinking number six is pretty darn cool. Check that guy out. The Did Amber Super Tree. Super Tree. It's looking good. I love it. But it's there so is. Tall. One, two, three, yeah. five, six? That's a big boy. That's one of the ones five you see six. way up in the UP. Oh, really? Yeah, way up there, the big ones. Have you ever been to the Upper Peninsula, Marcy? Once. All right. I had chicken fried fingers. Chicken fried fingers? Yeah, we did a trip when I was younger to Mackinac Islands. Ah. In the dunes, as we were going up, and all I could eat was really chicken strips, because I don't like fish. Uh-oh. I love chicken strips. So, I do want to say, Congratulations to Amy, first of all, on her house purchase. She just said she really wants to get those for her brand new house she just bought. Uh -huh. So that's pretty sweet, but we're going to put them live on next week's show. So whoever's getting them, as, as these one of a kinders are, it's first come, first serve. So if that's Amy, whoever it is. Yeah, so show number 143, which week. is in between Christmas and New Year's on Tuesday. Yep. 
So that's the perfect time to get them when everyone's ready. The other thing I want to say is I don't know if Sandy, and we'll take a look at the board, I don't know if Sandy just was excited for slug time or if she knows that this is a gift for her from Tanya. Ah. This is a gifted Christmas slug, the first Christmas slug ever, and it's going to be for uh, Sandy. So, Sandy, I know you're watching. I just saw your comment, so we're going to get into it. And should be pretty sweet. Sounds good. Well, let's do it. All right. All right. Marcy, I've got the peppermint eyes over here to be torched. I didn't turn the garage on, but okay. just two, uh, maybe in the medium pedal. size, not too small. Okay. Is this uh, slug going to be on a patty because it's going to have a big hat on it? I'm going to make it lower and squatter. It's going to be a real slimy Ooh, one. Uh, stealth slug? Stealth slug. Double Coming S. out from under the Christmas tree? Oh, yes. I don't I know. Like what it. Do, you, do you want them tinier or bigger? You Let's guys, I'm glad to be on the camera here in this Christmas yeah. special yeah. season. Oh man, we had a beautiful night last night at the sauna and jumping in the lake. We had some good friends of ours out there and a really good friend of ours, Suzanne, made these amazing, cool uh, face washing uh, knittings. They're unbelievable. We love them. And I got one myself for washing my face and doing whatever I want to do at the hot shop. Uh, between Suzanne and Tanya, we got some pretty amazing knitters in our lives. Lucy's been really getting in it too. She's a pretty darn amazing knitter herself. I'm not sure what the difference is between crocheting and knitting, okay. but it's all right, guys. It's all right. The question for tonight. We haven't talked about it yet, guys. And there's the little mini Giscalo that someone's going to win tonight from last week's question. But tonight, what gift would you most like to find under your tree? Mm. Guys, maybe you might want to find one of these Gathering Point coffee cups. I'm telling you, they're not going to be online for purchase until what, next week? I think next week. Next week they're going to be online, so keep your eyes and ears open uh, for sure, but make sure that you send your question to what gift would you like most underneath your Christmas tree to enews at glassacademy.com and include your name so that we can get you in the wheel of names, which is what it's all about. So Jake's making this Christmas slug and it's looking like he's using some white. Very appropriate. Appropriate. Yeah, very appropriate. Marcy's over here gathering him up. Is that red, Marcy? Yep. No? Yes. Yes? All right. What is that going to be? We're going to do two spiral trails. Oh. Double trailed uh, red and green spirals. And for those of you that are asking, I saw a couple comments, where's Michelle at tonight? It's She's tonight resting. She's taking a break because it has been December here in a retail family business location. And we've had some of the busiest weekends probably all year these past few weekends. And she's been, she's been crushing it. Yep. So she's taking the day off. She set us up with the trees, set up the display. Everything's looking beautiful. But you all can uh, wish her a nice, relaxing evening. She yeah. could be watching a movie, but I think I she's I think probably she's watching already the show. watching us, making sure <laughs> yeah. we're doing everything right, shooting texts to us. It's not relaxation when she's <laughs> at home trying to relax and she's texting us, guys. Come on. <laughs> You could just turn that into some type of crazy Easter egg, couldn't you? I could, very easily. That's but you're, true. But you're not going to leave that texture on there, are you? <laughs> did you Whoa, see that? I saw it. He jumped. That thing did a whip, guys. It, like, whipped. You could use the button and slide it back to on center. It's kind of inverse. <laughs> I'm not really sure how the button works, but we won't worry about that. I'm working the jingulator, guys, which the jingulator. holds the camera. Down these Christmas times, we call it the jingulator. <laughs> and that definitely is uh, just doing a fine job. If I got to hold my hand a little crooked, I don't care. Oh, my goodness. As long as I keep you guys in on all the action. I love the jingulator. So what, we're putting another one on now? Yes. Well, I want to be in real close on this one. All right. And this one's green, so you're going. I'm going right to Christmas land. <laughs> all out. I like it. Does anybody know the history of where Christmas colors came from? Or any color for that matter, Halloween colors? I mean, how do we, who came up with these colors? Do you know? I think Santa did. Purple came 
royalty because it came from like a animal you had to like find in the ocean, I think. That's interesting. So purple? So it was Perch. very, 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 very hard to actually pull off. We did already know that the perch is royalty because we are the royal glass makers at the Ren Fair. That's right. Let me give a point to this. Marcy's marveling this up, getting a point on it, guys, making sure that it's just the right shape for Jake to put the second trail ready. on, I'm which ready. I'm going to be zooming on in. Sandy, this is going to be a one of a kind, or that's for sure. Perfect fit. I'd like to say that this was the perfect example of the zoom mechanism, guys. Because if you remember correctly, in the summer, we can't let our camera get too close to the heat without having an Explosion. overheat. Yeah, so we strap ice packs on it, but we're pretty lucky today because it's nice and cool outside. It's about 30 degrees out, and we're loving it. This is the perfect time of year to be blowing glass. Uh, I actually sometimes get a little frustrated because it's hard to break a sweat in front of the furnace during the winter days. We've got we to gotta get sweaty some other ways. we got to stay physically active during the winter. Yeah, we got sweaty at the sauna last night. Yep. It was beautiful. As long as you have fun. Exactly. Right. So Jake's melting in. A little air. I'm not sure I want to. Oh, you're going to leave it texturoni? Melt it in. I'm going to leave it texturoni. That's right. Folks, I see Batch, our shop cat, scurrying around over yonder. She's having a beautiful day. She's around the corner already. But oh, man, he's gone. There she is. Batch, say hi yeah. to everybody. It's Christmas time. Oh, no. There she goes. She's just going to fluff her tail at us. Jeez. She just fluffed her, t fluffed her tail right at us. Said, "Forget you." I'm just bailed. gonna need the tweezers, is all. Oh, Mister, leave it all at the knockoff. I don't even put. I didn't put the tweezers over there. No. Nope. You sure. Well, I'm gonna go for the special move and hope these tweezers aren't waxy. But here we go, folks. Oh yeah. Hello. Good. Ooh, one eye tendril one eye at, at a time. time. That's right. I don't know why. That's right. They are tendrils, folks. Wow, well, they Tendril number dose. Always snip off the excess tendril particle. And that's where the eyeballs will go on now, the marini eyes. And which ones are we using? Do you want We're to using the peppermint eyes, one of the last peppermint eyes we have. Nice. Nice. This is the super custom, guys. Remember, even next week, are we booked next week for customs, Jake? Mm, low. That is tough. Good. Getting a neckline in there. Remember, this guy's got to be low profile, baby. Stealth. That's right. Stealth slug. Stealth slug. He's looking good. He's got a little mouth, a perfect little white mouth yeah. right on the end. I can't uh, speak to any custom orders at the moment. Well, I'm just saying, guys, if you want something custom, you want to have it dated 2021, it you better get it next on next week's show. Reach out on the website, I'll talk to Jake, and, let you heat that up a little. and get a custom order so you can ring in the new year with something tasty signed 2021. Oh, she's over here soaking up some heat into the peppermint eyes on the pastorelli. Yeah, here goes closer. Jake. See how we talked about this before, it's very important to preheat these eyes before I put them onto the slug because the worst thing ever is having the timing all right and I grab the eyes and stick them on there and go to pull them up and they break in half and then he's got a lopsided half eye and actually it's pretty cute sometimes when that happens but. Nobody wants an eyeball to break in half guys. No, it's just not but fun, it's like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, yeah. That, that, what? So that's exactly what happened just then, but luckily it broke on the top half, not on the side. So his eyes still completely intact and looks like a peppermint eye. 
Ooh, looking good. Nice. It was a successful eye plunge. Two yeah. of them on there perfectly. Yeah, and you see what I mean though, when it, when it breaks in half, what I was talking about is if it splits down the middle and then you've got a line kind of like a, like a tiger's eye mm. in the middle. That always looks a little funky, but when it, just the top breaks off, we nice. still got the same pattern up top and it looks great. We're so here goes Squish Town. Yeah. Yep, well, inventory is at more than one, so we don't have to say it. Oh yeah. So here goes the GA stamp on the bottom of this crazy old slug, guys. It's a perfect spot for him to be on the bottom. He is looking cool. He's totally Santa style. I like him. Mm -mm. Looking good. Really crazy so working with uh green next to red. Yeah, the different colors, Jake just said, it's really crazy working with the green next to the red because the red's so stiff and the green is so soft, guys. But this sweet little slug is gonna be having a Santa hat put on it right now. I love it. Jake's gonna be letting Marcy have a little instruction about what he wants her to bring. I need like a bit that big with two coats of the size one white. The size of his fingers. You guys, all these trees up here are all custom made. A few of them I may have made, but Jake did most of them and they're pretty darn sweet. And if any of them sell, we are making more of these trees. Number 12 with the ornaments will remake that less. tree for sure. So they less. are available more than one. So if you buy one, the inventory will not go down because I think we put like a few on each one of the inventories, you guys. So. More than one person can buy these trees. They are sweet. Of course, each one of them will be very unique and one of a kind, but they'll be darn close to the exact same style as the tree that you saw right there. <laughs> Whoa. One or two. That was crazy. I know, two, I'm not please. sure why it does that. I'm not sure either. I think it's not, something's funky with it. Well, I can hold it this way. It's working. It's still moving. Nice. Having a little uh, craziness going on with the jingulator. Like if I keep it too close to my face, it's trying to slap me in the cheek. <laughs> exactly. I think it's because it's so sideways. Maybe it's turning into itself or something. I'll take a look at it after this one. Okay. But we're going to be putting on a little beard on this little fella. Ooh. A little Santa's beard on a slug. I can By request from Tanya. I can tell you that thing has not been done before, that's for sure. You want the other ones? Nah, I got this right here. Thank you. Looking good. Oh. Bass swirl beard. Right now All right, on nice looking, Jake. All right, now we're gonna do a red comb hat. Okay. Santa style hat, like That's you right. have on. Precisely. The wings hat. The wings hat. Yeah, you guys. I don't know if you heard the news, but they canceled the next three wings games. Unfortunately, but we're gonna survive. We'll get. We'll be able to watch them uh, coming up here after Christmas. I think they had uh, the coach, head coach, Blash Hill, ended up uh, getting put out with COVID. All right, here comes the hat. Looking the good. Size. She knew we didn't want to go too big. If we went the size of the gnomes, and that's what Chris mentioned, as soon as he heard I was doing this, he said, are you going to be putting them on a patty, or how is he going to stand? Because when you make a slimy slug really top heavy, they tend to wobble and wiggle and not do so well. They're so slippery. They're really slippery, so that's perfect. Give it a little uh, cylinder and then we'll do it. That's a pretty cool question. Yeah, Twitch, Twitch just asked if there's any color that we like using more than other colors. I'll tell you, 
it's not about a specific color. I mean, the blues are really nice. They're very soft. They're pretty consistent. Lapis is almost a little bit too soft. Ready? But yes. It's all about, it's nice to use all one color for a particular piece, guys, because when it's one color, it blows Look out really outside. symmetrically and even. Going for the red hat right now. It's gonna look, it looks a little bit orange putting it on just because it's so hot, but the red itself will turn brown while it's hot until it comes out of the annealing oven, guys. Then it'll turn bright red, just like the red that we just picked up. Check it out right there. That's bright red. I'm going to do, yes. Got a little it. wrap. But uh, I think really, personally for me, I like using like an iridescent gold and I love the perps. Those colors are really satisfying to use just because the piece turns out so darn gorgeous. You know, it's like, it just looks good. They look great together. Can anybody guess why I did that cut from outside of the bench? I, I can't even guess. Why'd you do it? I want to give him a second to guess. Oh, everybody guess. I think I know why. Why? You want me to say? Uh, no, maybe you should wait. <laughs> <laughs> Why did Jake do the cut from the outside of the bench, guys? On that hat. Is Real there a particular reason? I'm gonna say yeah. there is a particular reason. It's uh, gonna be a finesse. So I just did get the indication that's on the comment section, guys. There's six trees each. Per, per all those sweet trees. There's six of each, so you got an opportunity. But there's some nice ones. This one's number 14's real sweet, number 12's sweet, and number 5's a beauty. Look at that. Number 5's a gorgeous one. So Jake's over here getting ready to get the oh, wrap no, like of a, the band of A little of more pointy. We gotta put the band around. Uh, I'll take the topper first. Just get that hot, I'll take the topper first. The only reason I said long and pointy is because I can't do it like a normal wrap. I gotta be like this, and I'm gonna go like this and spiral it around the base, you know? Yeah, you hear Jake kinda uh, instructing Marcy to bring the bit the way he needs her to do it. Putting the tassel on the top of the hat first, using those sharp shears to get in there and cut and give the tassel some Fluffy action. I love some fluffy tassel. There's not too many hats around our house that still have tassels on them because Poe, our German short-haired pointer, is the first thing he finds. And if you turn your head for one minute, he's got your hat and he rips the tassel right off of it. So we just yeah. leave him off now. I came over the other day for, what was that, just some dinner? Yeah. And. I took my hat off for one second because I was laying on the floor and I turned around and he had it in his mouth. Why were you laying on the floor, Jake? Did you trip? I don't know. I think I was just relaxing. <laughs> laying in the middle of the living room on the floor? I like that. <laughs> so, so you're a floor person. I'm a floor person sometimes when there's carpet around. Okay. This is what I was explaining to Marcy is difficult. Typically, like you saw with these two trails, I can turn the pipe and go like this and spiral it on there. If it was a snowman, if it was a penguin, anything that has a hat, typically. But this ready? one, I'm ready. Watch how I gotta do this because the symmetry is different. Ooh, wrapping it around. Kind of difficult way he's doing it, but it's looking good. Whoa. Very nice, Thank nice you. job. Hey Jake, Clarissa from South Carolina just let us know on the feed that she's having back surgery tomorrow and she's asking for us to send out some positive energy to her. So Clarissa, we are sending all of our energy to you in South Carolina. We're hoping for the very best. It's if gonna they, be fine. There's nothing to worry about with back surgery these days. The doctors are so amazing. It's uh, gonna work out perfect for you, so don't worry. Yeah, I was just gonna say, if they don't so call us the uh, positive energy givers, 
Yeah, and honestly, what like back cause? surgeries are starting to become a bit of a routine now. I know. Woo! Clarissa's look gonna at go this smooth. Thing. That's pretty nice, Marcy. Nice job. Yes. Beautiful bits. That's gonna be the bright red. So is the hat, and then you got that watermelon green. You got the peppermint eyes and a little bit of a Santa's beard on there. Oh right. my God! Now we gotta that get the tail is going, unbelievable. Man. What a gift! What a gift from Tanya. It's unbelievable. I think Sandy and Tanya have a little bit of a gift off going here. I've seen them each give each other a uh -oh. couple of customs. So this is where Marcy was like, all right, Jake, let's get this thing going because this is going to be a little more difficult than your typical slug. The weight is not symmetrical on here and the thickness, I've purposely made it thicker because we're putting all these added bits on here and I didn't want to have any kind of situation go down. You guys see how he's heating up that little tail of the slug, the Look old slime and the slime ejector. Let's do it. He's getting it hot. He's going to give it one more flash. Nope, nope he's we're going, going for right it. Over to the bench. Help. Help. Yep. Oh. Who left it like that? And Marcy is superheating that tail. As it drops off, they're going to totally get it onto the knockoff bench. Yep. Beautiful. Nice catch, Marcy. Oh my God, he sits perfect. This is great. Let That's me awesome. get around the front side so you guys can get a view of this bugger. Look at him with his peppermint eyes and a beard and that little tail. In the back's looking perfect, Hold Marcy. On. Marcy's Hold the on. tail queen. And Jake got the granny grabbers Help. out. Away he goes. Let's Into get him home. Into the annealing oven it goes, guys for about 16 hours. You all know that, but you guys, sometimes we gotta repeat these things because there's other people watching the show and we average about 2,500 people by the next day watching our show. And a lot of those people have never seen glass blowing before. So it's a good thing for us to explain everything over and over and over again. Nice job, you two. That was pretty dang amazing. That's one of a kind, once again, that was pretty cool. Custom order, that's what we do here, guys. It's all about seeing something made before your very eyes. Right, Merry now, Christmas to Sandy. I'm gonna take over the camera because you are making another custom. Sounds good. It is custom time for Chris Look at my here. hair, guys. Look at it. I found these laying around and I just stuck them in my hair. I had so much fun with it. A star <laughs> fell down. All right, so we're back over here. Uh, maybe on the table for a minute while I get my thoughts together and the board. That sounds good because if you take a look at this, folks, artist choice, you know what that means? That means that Tanya quoted Chris a price and said, I want you to make something one of a kind. And he came to me with the idea today. I texted him yesterday and said, just heads up, you got to be thinking about this tonight in bed. And he was thinking about it. And he's even changed up his thoughts a little bit today final change-ups because it's all about being one of a kind and being original. Oh, he's even original, looking for color. Unique. So he's pulling out some extra colors here. We'll go briefly over the table here. Since they're not one and dones, we haven't been pulling them from the table. So I have no idea which ones are the hot sellers yet, but I know if I had to guess which ones are the hot sellers, I'm thinking they're in the three tier range. The black and gold has never been seen before and is totally unique. But Definitely also, would be a good compliment to any kind of decor or anything if, if you don't need the green. It's kind of contemporary. It know? really is. It really is. But I also think any of these minis, both the mini with the ornament, your classic watermelon green right there with the ornaments, red ornaments, or the mini. This is the new green. This is our typical emerald transparent beautiful green we have on 90% of our too. trees. That's got snow, and I think those are probably our top sellers because we've never done the minis in these specialty colors. And I don't think, I saw a comment like from someone one. about pricing. I don't think Michelle really oh. priced them up that much. Let's take this one into the light a little right, bit more. Right, Maybe right, right over right. here because that's the second one I showed off when I came over here. And the swirls in that snow are in the Wasn't uh, that watermelon tree. and the granny apple green? You nailed it. Watermelon and granny apple. And That's then we got beautiful. the dusty snow guy here. He's sweet. He's a beauty. He's a beauty. And I, yeah. we were thinking, you know, we wanted to make a watermelon large for the people that do collect our trees and have something one of a kind. We do have a couple other large trees, but we made the watermelon all the way up. And then on the third and fourth tier, Marcy and I kind of looked at each other. We were like, 
Let's spice it up something. a little bit. This is kind of like the day after snow, or if it was just a light snow where light it only dusting. hits the top few, doesn't make it quite down. You know, it's like amongst the other trees, and there's other trees around. There's like it's... one big one right here, like this. I don't know. Something like that. Something. But I, don't know, I like to have fun with these. They're really we fun. We all out of They're tobacco here. Look at number 11. Isn't he cute? Very deep, we got deep, no. deep green here. It's almost, it's almost like a deep sea or lake green. I like it a lot. And then we got this mixture going here with the brown and the tree leaves. So it's almost like it's got branches up in the canopies of the leaves here, which is really nice. Yeah. And then we got our little arrow guy. Nice is and tall, what? standing strong, always a oh. good thing to have. We've made a glass slipper before, for but sure. Definitely, definitely. I like them. these guys down here. These guys are fun. Yeah, Jake and I had a lot of fun making these trees. Um, and let's see, do you want to show them the question real quick? Do we do That's that a yet? great idea. If you take a look here, folks, Chris went over it one time. This is the giveaway question. This is how you receive free glass. We've done Quite it for free. 142 shows. We're probably going to do it for 142 more until Netflix picks us up and then they start telling us how we can give away glass. But that might not be for a couple more years. But anyway, this is the giveaway question, folks. To answer the giveaway question is how you enter to win. We're going to be doing a drawing tonight for this mini Discello. But the question for tonight is what gift would you most like to find under your tree, folks? And you look real close. You can see two gifts down there. That doesn't mean your gifts have to be that size because that's about the size of like one little piece of coal. So and send it to glassacademy at enews.com. Put right. your name in there if you can, pretty please, and we'll email you back once you win. Uh, right. later. And just wait, Chris is getting crazy in the back there. Hope his mic's now. not on, but. A nativity, a nativity scene. scene. We have not done a nativity scene before because making faces and making specifics like that, we've done reindeer before and it took my dad and a couple of the artists a year to create the reindeer. And it's metamorphosized throughout many years as well. So to go through a whole nativity scene and have every product put together is a serious piece. But I have seen yeah. it done before with glass shops. And if you want to spend upwards of three, four, five grand and to put together a handmade activity scene, it is possible and it could happen down the line. Yeah, so that's something we as artists here would have to brainstorm, honestly, and We'd have probably to put our like together. using all of our to techniques at that point. Yeah, I would say so. Every stop, everything from torch to casting. I would say so. Yeah. So Chris, what are we thinking and what's going on here? So what I'm making, guys, I'm making a, a, I'm making a wreath. And it's going to be a wreath with uh, holly berries on it, and it's going to be pretty darn sweet. A wreath. A wreath. So does that have to do with, let me take a look at this guy over here. Well, that's the crown of thorns. Is there inspiration or similarities in what you're going to be doing? Uh, with this? Well, or this is, is going to be green, different? and it's going to be kind of the same, but I got a completely different thought process on how I'm going to do the center ring of the wreath because wreaths are made with wound branches right. around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this big bit up, and I'm going to stretch it out like this long. I'm going to fold it over and touch it. I'm going to grab the back side again and fold it over and touch it again. Do a couple twists, and then I'm going to wrap it around that metal ring so that it looks like we've got wound like six or eight pieces of wood branches. Then I'm going to add all the green uh, foliage on the outside. Shoot. It's going to be pretty sweet. Oh my this God. is going to be a sculptural thing here, Tanya. guys. This is going to be stinking crazy. Do you want to help him with this, or am I helping You're him? You're helping him with it. Oh, come on. You want me you to do it? It's up to you. It's just going to be bringing green bits. But I could do it. That's fine. I'll do it. You want to do it? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. I Jake's think especially be running some bits, be a baby. Pretty big one. What's that? You're going to be running the bits? Yep. Beautiful. So we're going to be doing, uh, he'll tell me how it's going down, but like I brought this over here to show you, this was a piece from our Thursday experimental show, which it sounds like going forward we're planning for 1230 on Thursdays, folks. And next week we're get, we got... Both Michelle and I have really cool ideas of what we're going to do. I'm going to be making a bonsai. She's got an idea of what she's going to be doing. 
This is Chris's piece from that show, and this was a beauty. And it may have not even had a correlation, but when you think about a large ring, this is what I compare it to. So size-wise, we're gonna see he's got a pretty big mass of glass. And you also can notice the ring that he pulled out over here that he's gonna be wrapping the glass around. Uh, put that thing, put the crown next to the ring so they have a size comparison here. Let's take a gander. That's about the same exact size. Yeah, it really is. And folks, if you put that crown on your head, it would not be comfortable. We got some, let's see here, we got opal brown as a mixture here. A lot and of earthy branch here, colors. We got, we got our watermelon, we got our pine tree green, and we got our new green, and we got light tobacco in there so that we can really get a sense of a realism to this is what I think Chris is going for. Yes, sir. Hey, Bob Arooney. I'm actually going to leave it a little bit texturous. Take this and put it over here in case I got some issues on the marver. Hey, Jake. Yes? Why don't you clear off this marver of the paper and the burnables? Interesting. The marver on the left is too small. No, I think I'm, I'm pretty good. It's the papers we don't need there, maybe. Just, just so they don't do catch the on fire. Yeah, okay. So we got Chris here, and he is actually going to be dipping that little nub in the glass there, of the glass, into the water so that he can cool it and grab it some more as he's pulling this out, nice and long styles. That's a lot of glass, folks, and that thing is hot. So hot. It's moving. And he's flipping around because he's trying to elongate it evenly in pieces. Oh, my God. It went out pretty nice. It's relatively even. There's some wobblage, but honestly, wobblage. I, I probably would have done a lot worse. Look at that. He's giving it a twist. Oh. Now, he's only got so much time. Once that falls out and it stiffens up, there's no way to reheat it up to have that same core temperature. Oh, the full twist. Nice. He did a twist. Look at this. The perfect size. Are you kidding me? I don't think I would have been able to do that myself. That is huge, folks. That is not small. That, that's not small. You're going to need to get to work. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Come on, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> Goodness. We got some got it. You want the left door or both doors? What I'm going to do is I'm going to do like I did before and have you bring me a clear bit that I can put on the end of this. One door will be good, up. and then make a punny out of it out of another punty. All right. Folks, the reason I had these on the marble is because this is really cool information we're going to talk about in a minute. Don't let me forget. We'll get there. We'll put his diamonds back on the bench, and I'm going to grab a Maurice and a punny. Look at this, guys. That looks so cool. And he's torching this area right now because it is a very, 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 very light area, but also the fact that we need it to break it, break it off. So he's going to make it smaller with our diamonds. Nice. Give it a puff. Okay, good. chunker of a Maurice there. I want to make sure this thing is secure enough that I can hold the whole piece. And I'll disguise this punty bit with some colored uh, foliage, but that's the perfect spot to punty this up on, guys. It's a beautiful bit, Jake. So I'm also at the same time shaping up this punny. Now this punny has become very bent over the past couple weeks somehow folks. We don't know how that happens but it's happening for sure and uh, we need to really watch that. Thank goodness we're not making a symmetrical piece like a goblet with that That's thing. That's what I was going to say <laughs> but then I got distracted by how bent it was. <laughs> Oh, I actually exactly can see true. that from here. Whoa. It's super bent. I don't know Whoa. who's bending them or how it's happening, but it's going down. And that's wear and tear on the tools. 
but it's kind of tough. And I spoke about on our Q and A on Sunday how when we were talking about the molds, you look at a dirty mold with scratch marks all over it, and it's a crazy idea. Nice to think that you need to be tender and gentle and safe with the giant. Yep, piece of metal. It's the same thing with a blowpipe. You got to be gentle. You got to treat it like it's your friend. So the bits I want you to bring me, Jake, for these are going to be a mix of the watermelon, the uh, emerald, and the pine tree green. OK? So only the green colors, because these are the foliage and not the stick. Because we already made the stick, and that's what's around the circle there. Wow, this thing is huge. We are honestly kind of maxing out the size of our reheating hole here, aren't we? Chris is currently reheating the end there as Jake is putting up more pontes. So he said a three green mix. That's kind of like what they put on the... Uh, in no, that. If you're, if you're going to mix more than one green, don't put a whole coating of anything on. Because we don't want them overlapped, you know what I mean? So dap, tap, tap, or just bring all one color. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tap, tap, tap. Back tap, down the line. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Got it. Well, we get multiple bits off of that. Yep. So, what I'm trying to do, guys, is not overheat the whole thing and just keep it hot enough that it's not going to break and come off the pipe. Go for it, bring her after you like. It's fine. I'm gonna have to try to. You want some bigger shears? No, nope, I'm doing fine. Thank you, though, Marcy. This is gonna be crazy, guys. This might be a good opportunity as we get in these bits to try out our bench camera. There you go. For sure. And you notice I started putting the bits on close to the punty because I want to keep that weight building slowly off of the piece itself. I'm trying to give you guys a different angle here. And it smackens, and it snips, and it crimpity crimp crimp crimp. When you get this in the place, make sure yeah. you have a nice heavy hook so that this hangs up correctly and it doesn't fall off the door. So really put a heavy hook on it. Here goes another one, guys. I think Jake is just going to go and gather over that piece and go get some more colors going. Let's go take a look, guys. Swoop. We got watermelon, pine tree, new green. And a marvering. You know, if we were if we were uh, planning on making multiple large pieces like this in an evening, we'd probably have two or three more assistants here. We'd have one person manning the doors the entire time because this heat and the way that we got the doors open, it doesn't last forever in there when the doors are open. So. To have it closed in between flashes is very important. But it's been on all day. We'll do with what we've got. Chris is even getting pretty toasty over here, and he's 
dipping his hand in the bucket of water with the tool because as the piece keeps rocking here, the tool heats up and hot glass likes to stick to other hot materials. So he has to literally chill out the hand, the, the hand and the shears. So you literally, literally got to cool it off and dip it. You already saw him torching the punny there. We may eventually bring a punny rat as well because yeah. this is a pretty huge piece. And over the course of adding all this foliage on, that connection rod is going to be losing its core temp. question on how to actually hang this thing up, Chris. Do you think you could put a Diskello hanger on this? Uh, it could be, but I'm thinking that probably even some type of a, a piece of a dowel of some kind coming out of the wall would be fine. A nice hanging on a wooden dowel. Yeah, something really sturdy though, guys. Really, really sturdy. It's got to have a solid connection to wherever well, we it's at. We could put a patty there and have it be a, dis a thing right there. Well, the skeleton holder might work just fine. Very nice. You see the way the learning process to these when you're doing our, that's our fourth bit now, and I've brought them a little larger. I think I'm shooting for the amount of glass he'll have enough heat on that'll hold its heat to get all the cuts he wants in right now in one heat. Any larger than that, he'd probably be working it a little bit too long, and he's understood that just putting it on as one large one like that, a nice spiral is gonna save him the extra cut mark having the punty right by his hand when he's snipping it off. I'm actually over here leaving the shears in the water a little bit so they cool off a little more. Yeah, it's true. More than the heat of the hand than the hand next to the piece. Those so shears will heat up, beautiful. and we'll start uh, sticking to the glass. That happens often with the trees that we make, especially with something like this. You're doing this many cuts. These are some cold ones if you want fresh ones. Great. Two pairs of shears, backup shears as they call it. Just so they're a little colder if he wants to. Nice. I don't know. I'm one to be overly prepared or overly helpful. And as many of you know, the way this works is that the longer we spend on a piece, the colder that core heat gets. So things are pretty crazy right now and it's all coming together, but by the time we're completely filling this thing with green foliage, the amount of stress on the punny will have increased significantly. Significantly. And that's when things really start getting pressurous. Jake is literally running back and forth between our reheating furnace and the actual furnace so that we keep the heat going, but Chris has enough space in the hole to actually like heat the piece itself. Yeah, and I told Marcy earlier, I went on a run last night for the first time in like five years, and my legs are super sore. Aww. So running back and forth right now is a little bit, uh, I feel you like I'm shuffling. <laughs> it's very odd. You want me to run bits? No, I mean, we could switch halfway through, but I think I got a good rhythm going here. Okay. Thank you, Marcy. I wasn't even thinking of that. No, it's not that bad. I'm just complaining. We complain here in the shop, and we rib on each other. We're good. I'm really only running to keep my glass as hot as possible. I don't want Chris to have any extra labor on the hands when you're doing that many cuts because it honestly gets really wearing on your hands. And he's cutting it close in the size in there, adding a little foliage on. All right. Chris, I'm going to switch your shears to the cold ones. You got okay. fresh cold shears. Any thoughts? 
thoughts right now? My thoughts are just keep it in control, baby. You got this. You yeah. know what you're doing. Just taking my time, making sure I got enough heat and everything. A little extra heat every time on the punty. Just so it doesn't get below that point that it starts to want to crack. He's even swirling on these things. It really gets kind of lumpy. Those not working? Anybody see that hole there? Like, look at the, look at our reheating hole here. Like, this thing is almost completely open. And we really use the doors to, like, block in the heat, to keep the heat inside. But we're working so large, we literally cannot do that. There goes Jake again. Into his hole. Torching. You want to wrap for it? Well, we're doing pretty good. Okay. I don't want it to start moving. You know? Right. guys notice but Chris is actually going back and forth on the size he's doing for this piece. Super important to keep it at least uh, weight Somewhat. wise. Symmetrical -ish. A little bit symmetrical yeah. That also gives a chance for the other side of the wreath to cool off a bit so it doesn't thermal shock when we add bits on the other side and it keeps the whole thing warm. As I'm looking at the color here, it reminds me that I put in another color order today, folks, and the color backup or that port backup does seem to start being affecting, uh, is starting to affect our color supply. Not hugely, but there's a few of our staple colors that we're unable to get at the moment. So hopefully that doesn't last too long. I heard things were clearing up. The movement looking good. It's looking real good. Really trying to add the fluff around. This thing's not going to be light by the time we're finished. How's that hand feeling? Good. Nice butt shot of Chris here. He's trying to super concentrate, guys. You guys got any questions for us? Like, feel free to type them in the comments. We'll try to answer them as much as we can. Always a lot of fun to hear what you guys want to know. Because I know a lot of stuff, Second but trade. I don't know what you don't know, so ask questions. If you see something weird happening and you want to know why, let us know. Right. Here comes another one. And bloop. Oh, yeah. literally turning the piece so he can even angle himself to get into where he wants to snip. I'd love to get a look at the comments right now. I want to see what Tanya's saying. Alright, I'm picking up this phone here. Alright, so. Robin says, we are blown away. Wow. Ha, ha. In quotations. <laughs> That's very funny, Robin. Uh... Dawn's holding her breath along with everybody else. 
Sandy's never seen anything like this. Canton, Michigan says hello. Mary's got anxiety. Last big one, and we'll do a few small ones to fill in some holes, and then we'll do berries. All right. Bridget, hi, Bridget. We see you. Hope you're doing well. Congratulations to your son, by the way. Nice. Okay, Lori, we see that you just got here. We are literally making a wreath of pine tree Christmas green wreath out of glass here. And this is going to be a custom order piece. It is gifted to our beloved Tanya, who is a good friend of the shop here and is definitely, definitely a very gracious person uh, without going into too much detail. She Don't is love this. She is a certified patron of the arts. She is definitely a certified patron of Glass Academy, frankly. <laughs> and we have many of those uh, amazing fans watching us, allowing us to do what we're doing here today. It's super cool, and we can't be more thankful. It's pretty darn and I love awesome. All the hearts coming through, guys. Thanks so much. Bridget's losing her mind. <laughs> Anybody on Twitch got questions for me? I love the fact that you guys are here. Look at that glowing wreath. Okay, Drake, don't pass out. Breathe, sir, breathe. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try to just fill in a couple small spots right in here. Okay, here's one for you. We're just filling in. We have the majority of our pine needles on this thing now. I'm gonna swing around to the back side a little bit. Oh, <laughs> that was fun to watch. Chris shaking his hand like crazy. Use that water, man. I can't get too much closer. Pushing the limits, folks. Love to see it. Don, can you retype your question, please? I missed it. And if you guys want a replica of this or something else, custom order crazy styles, and we do it on the show, feel free to email Jake. We're going. We got a link one to put in there right now. On the Glass Academy. What's up? On our website. And we are getting stuck in weird places with some glass here. Oh, all right. Just push it around. A couple more small ones. Are we adding any ornaments? I think we are. Chris needs carpal tunnel surgery just yet. I don't know. I might be happy with this, Jake. Happy with it? It's getting pretty heavy. I think just putting, uh, if you've got one greenie, I can put a little bit on one more spot. Yep. shears in the water dawn is because one the shears are literally getting too hot and the metal is sticking to the glass and pulling it out in very strange ways Let's so it's drop yet. All right, I see far it. too hot to even use a tool so he dips the water on the bottom dips into the water cools the entire Sorry, tool at thing. once yeah, and also it. It cools his hand off at the nice same time half that size for berries Jake so that we have enough working temperature because hot glass sticks to other hot materials and if we don't cool things off, it just does the wrong stuff. I mean, that's not fun. Yep. See? Just, whole tool, whole tool. 
shake off the excess water. How much do you think that's going to weigh, Dad? I say easily 50 pounds. I don't know if it's going to be 50 pounds. Got settling down now, though? Yeah. It's got it right on center. Kind of. <laughs> Uh, Peanut says you just need to like reattach new hands, some sort of like Frankenstein y thing. Just get new hands instead of having surgery to fix them. Right. I, I need one more coat or two. Okay. Try not to torch them too much. Oh, happy holidays, Kelly. The tops of them. Don't? Yeah, like don't torch the raindrop or don't torch the red as much. So the glass oh, doesn't crackle because it's still time. way too hot. I mean, it you does do a little or bit or of crunching, but it's not flash. necessarily shattering the glass. Um, that and we're also heating it up so consistently that there's no way for it to actually break break. You know, we're just a bunch of alchemists here, pyrotechnics. Coming in. And we are adding our berries. Take another one. Berry to the leaf, to our pine needles. Jake's doing some more cardio and he doesn't like it. Done. I don't think anybody wants to be in Chris's brain. And there's a lot going on up there. <laughs> and yes, we are putting red on the berries. These are red holly berries. And they're going to be super pretty. Give me a second, Jake. Just heat yours up. I'm going to grab a butter knife. Stole the butter knife earlier, guys. One sec. Wow. Flattening out our wreath because it's really it warping at the ends. Okay, I'm ready. It's really tough, actually. The green bits were not so bad with a cold hole to get hot, but red berries here. Red, as many of you know, is the stiffest color we've got. Most and standardly, at least. I'm trying to get this thing hot, but you see how difficult it is for him to cut it. When I'm running back and forth from the hole, that extra three seconds outside of the heat does make a huge difference. Got to keep the heat. I don't know where the stamp's going to go quite yet. That's going to be a question for later. Right now, we're worried about the berries. Breathe, everybody. Breathe. No passing out. It's not that strenuous for us, so. Is two more going to be good, or are you going to want some? I'm going to probably one more, one more bit after that, probably three more on to just pose it off. I'll get another one off of that. Chris is also trying to even out the wreath a little bit. And he's using the torch right now to completely heat the punny or our punty mark right now so that we can easily keep it warm and keep it from cracking and popping off a piece. And then the whole piece is on the floor. And we don't want that either. So that's no fun. That shot. Woo. Okay, that's a weird shot. It's a pretty weird <laughs> you did that shot. on purpose, didn't you? <laughs> Never mind. It's okay. Never mind. Even 
distinguish the colors here right now. Oh, yeah. Do a flip and a smack. Put three and off a it. Snip and a flip, smack, stick. About your hand burning off. Oh, yeah. And a smick and a snip. I think that's it. All right. Chris is liking it. He's giving it an okay. All right, this is looking beautiful, folks. I'm finally setting down the pipe. I'm gonna cool down for a quick second while I watch Chris sweat a little more. But uh, yeah, a little clarification on this piece, folks. This is an artist choice custom order for Tanya. And Tanya's got a beautiful collection right now. Every other month, it seems, she'll go in and purchase a custom order from both me and from Chris. And I'm sure down the line when Marcy's making pieces later on, she'll be getting them from Marcy as well. But it's uh, really cool that she's got such a collection. And I've got a theme to mine. Chris has been making one-of-a-kind pieces for as long as he's been doing those orders for her. And this is gonna be one heck of an addition uh, to her collection. So Tanya, as always, thank you for your support in what we do. This is a gift from Chris to Tanya. Absolutely not, nope. No? Nope, it's a piece that she purchased. It's an artist's choice. Oh, right. okay. You wanna give a little uh, reduction, I mean a reduction? Reduction? Yeah, just a little bit for the interior core. We wanna get a little stamp on there? Ah, you wanna put a stamp on? I think we do. All right, we well, I'll give to. this a flash, and then we'll go for the stamp. All right. Now we're giving it a reduction, okay, guys, so that then. the iris tones that we have on our branch interior base start to shine and sparkle and those metals really kind of pop. Nice placement. Right there on the front, kind of like a little album. Just Jake just being in a second pair of hands at this point. Looking kind of silly. I'm gonna have to flatten this guy out a little bit. One more good heat. So he's gonna give it a large reductive heat here, a little extra heat on the core, and what he said is he's gonna flatten it out, which means you can kind of tell how, I know there's a name for the shape, but I can't think of it, where it's, it's circular, but if you look at it this way, it's kind of got a little bend to it, like up tops this way, comes down like that. So he's gonna give it a super heat and lay it on the marber and let that even and flatten itself out. Wait, I think I just figured out why people were confused. I thought Chris was somebody else and not the one in front of us. Ah, <laughs> a gift from Chris for Tanya, I see. I, that looks pretty good. I honestly thought she knew someone else named Chris. Sorry, guys. Maybe a little less on the reduction because the green's reducing, or I, I think, think it's, it's good. gonna be okay. It's pretty okay. Christmassy and holiday. All right. And that fades away a little bit in the annealing oven. That is serious, folks. Give him a, hold it up in the air. Oh my God. If you can. It's a Christmas wreath, guys. Some red holly berries on it. It looks very brown right now, and it's not Send really super great, we'll but it's no. super great. Oh, You're going to glove this away, Jake? Leave that like perfect and grab the gloves. Ugh, but not too much love. It's not over yet. Everybody's loving it, guys. They're going absolutely nuts. Gotta preheat these babies. That's the last flash. Yep. Then I'm gonna close these doors. And you can get underneath it while I'm putting the water on it. Come on. I'm coming. Ooh, quick. I'm gonna spin it once. Hold your breath, guys. I'll just take it. Yep. Come on, yeah, we don't need torch it. It's good. It came out perfect. Yeah, it did. Wow. Oh my God. Right up on the top shelf. Double door opening. Pushing it in with the pony. Holy moly. Nice bit work. Tanya. Wow. These guys are sweaty. They look gross. And I just got done saying I couldn't sweat, but 
now you can. <laughs> I broke a sweat. For sure. Like Running disgusting. down my Christmas hat. Wow. Oh. It's a good oh. thing. You're wearing the hats. You need a sweatband today. That was great. That's intense, Tanya. Hey, hey, that's hey, a, hey. That's it's a glowing. beauty for the collection. And yeah, that's true. It is glowing a little bit. Look Take a look, guys. guys. We completely rebuilt the recycle tank. Back up and running, folks. Woo. So we're going to have recycle glass in the new year, which is super cool. But again, everyone show the love to Chris as he's adding to the collection of pieces. Woo. That's a beauty. And uh, that's a beauty. I'm on to the camera. On to the camera. <laughs> Get out of here. There you go. Awesome, Take guys. A break, you deserve it. Beautiful. So considering the time, uh, we're not going to mess around. We're going to jump right into this next piece. Oh, yeah. And I'll go over to the board and describe them when you guys are getting ready. I Lucky I brought all those browns out for the branches. Yes, yes, it's perfect. All right. So you guys, look what we're what doing. I just brown? got done doing Tanya's sweet piece, number three. And we're moving on down to the Charlie Brown tree with a red ornament bending that puppy down. It's going to look good. We're loving it. You guys, just to reboot the station, we are show 142 of The Gathering Point, right here in Dearborn, Michigan. 10 minutes outside of Detroit, maybe 15 minutes, and we got our tech support here getting buck wild. What's up, ladies? Gabby and Sam. Jake's <laughs> letting them know what's going on. We got a so, giveaway we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing the giveaway and considering a little bit of a technical difficulty on the wheel and name side of things, we do actually have the winner here. We're not gonna show you the wheel spinning, but we've got the winner of this miniature Biscello with hardware. Show them the back, described 141 on Look it from at last that little show. one. Around oh, the front. Right, and we've got the name, folks. It starts with a C. So everyone who's got the rest of the alphabet, I apologize. Oh yeah, here little is the mini name, Marcello. You want to show it off? I can't see it. Christine, Christine. Walosk. Congratulations, Christine. Oh on your yes. First, possibly first. She could already have a few Discalos, but her first miniature Discalo. And her first That's win. Funny. And her first win. I, I don't know. She could have won. Maybe. Maybe. Let us know if you're on the feed. Let us know if you've won before or if this is the first time you've won, Christine. You guys participate in the questions because we love giving away free glass every week on the show. And we're doing it again and we're doing it on Tuesday. That's right. And so here's what I'm just going to make an executive decision upon because of the circumstances here tonight. And it is that considering the timing of what's gone down and that we have one more custom order to do, I think that we should give away one of our mini trees over here on the featured product table as the giveaway for next week. The first time we've ever gave away a featured product. What? Can I pick? And maybe Marcy can pick. Can I pick? But I'm not going to jeopardize this Charlie Brown Christmas tree because we need to hustle to make the giveaway and then make a quick giveaway. Well, you guys worry about your Charlie Brown Christmas tree and we'll take care of the giveaway after that's over. No. I mean, because we're not... We're, we don't advertise what the giveaway is until the end of the show. All right, well, then we'll figure it out at the end of the show. Yeah. Can I still pick? If it happens out that way, you can pick for okay. sure. Okay, yes. All right, Charlie Duran Tree, let's go. All right, so let's see if I can show you a picture of this. Well, we drew the picture. I think most people know, most people have seen Charlie Brown and know what this bent Charlie Brown Christmas tree looks like, correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yep. All right. Just and if not... Google it up, folks. So I know exactly how this is going to go down. The only thing that I had been a little uh, wondering about was the wood planked base. Oh. Two planks of wood. So just give me two seconds and go look at the future product table, and I'm going to figure it out. What? You don't want people to Thank be watching you. your brain work? Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. I'm actually going to go over something real quick for you. That's yep. even better. All right. Okay, so with background as the feature product tables, we got these kind of discount things going here. Um, these are customer comments that you're going to read? This one is a customer comments. Uh, hi, everyone. Love the Discello show. So unique and beautiful. I use, I use dough a lot being Italian and working in a pizza place for years. And just remember, don't hold your pizza like a book. Oh, yeah, because then it turns into... Uh, Roseanne. Pizza boat. 
Thank you. Roseanne, thank you for that. We don't want those lying on top of the featured table now. Uh, my best frozen pizza. Um, so someone's only made frozen pizzas. I tried at home, effort fail, and the wine probably didn't help. These were questions of the question from last yeah, week. Last and what week, were they? What was so the question? Have you ever spun out your own pizza dough? You know, like whoop, whoop. Ah, oh, okay. Um, some people it worked, some people it didn't. Uh, I tried at home, unfortunately, disaster. And that's another no. Nope, nope, LOL. I have never successfully spun out a piece of what, but I will keep trying though. Nice. And then we have these lovely little knit dish rags here. Who are these from again? These are from Suzanne. Yep, yeah. I let everybody know that earlier, but Suzanne and Steve, if you're watching, we love those things. Those are the one Michelle picked out. Mine's already at home being used. So these will stay nice and happy right here for us for now. All right. Well, Jake's over there working on his deal with I Marcy. Know what I'm doing. You know what you're doing? And he knows I'm what he's doing, go. you guys. But check these trees out Christmas time all year long. The one thing I do like about the ones that don't have the little Christmas bulbs on them, like number three, which I love, is that they're nice to leave out all year long. Number one is a beautiful Michigan pine with a little bit of snow on the top. I think that's a gorgeous one. I think. Number six and seven are just ridiculous how beautiful they are. Look at that one. That must be a jack pine, telephone pine in the back. And this guy, but those are year-long Michigan pines. You keep them out. You put them on your windowsill, on your mantle. Number 13 also is non-Christmas related, uh, along with 15, which has got the snow. And all three of these guys up here, number nine and number 11 and number 10, here we go, number 10 fell over, but here it is, guys, boom. Number 10 is beautiful, too. 10, 9, 10, and 11 are gorgeous. You guys, check them out. They're all pictured online. We have a limited supply of any of those, so check them out. All right, folks. Here we go. We got it figured out now. And, all right. Uh, Marcy knows exactly what's up. Yep. As soon as I gather this up, you can follow right behind me, and we'll get it going. We need more punnies. Remember, folks, while he's gathering up that wooden base, he's going to be constructing. What gift would you most likely like to find under the Christmas tree this Saturday morning on Christmas Day? Put that answer into us at enews at glassacademy.com, and you could win yourself a beautiful tree that we're going to be giving away that Marcy's going to pick out at the end of the show today, we may just go into about five minutes or so of OT, but the Red Wings aren't playing right now this week, so we deserve a little OT ourselves. Could the cameraman give me a paddle? Absolutely. Do you want one particular brown or all the browns? That's good. Thank you. Oh. Uh, for this one, let's just go tobacco. That one? Yep. I'm still trying to figure out which brown is brown, guys. We've got like 25 browns. That's right, we got sure, a lot of browns. And like they say back in the old days, shit brindle brown. I never said that. No one remembers that? I don't think I was around for the old days, though. No, you weren't? You were born in the new days? Ooh, weird I fact. I was in the 2000s, baby. Weird fact. Weird fact, uh-oh. My first professional football game I ever went to was a Browns game. Talking about there Browns. Oh, folks, she does know her Browns. How's, Cle awesome. how's Cleveland as a team, Ohioian? You're not even an Ohioian, are you? Browns are bad news. You're an Illinoisian, right? Bad news, Browns, man. Bad but for news. some reason, I think this year was a good year for them. Yeah. Well, it kind of reminds me talking about Brown. Aren't we making a Charlie Brown tree? <laughs> That's a lot of brown, folks. That's a lot of brown. So, I still haven't revealed who this is from, but a little great supporter of ours, an amazing uh, young gun, young Glass Academy gun, is gifting this to his mother oh. for Christmas. Yes. I'm not going to say anything. You may already know who you are, but at least for the sake of the show, I won't. That's perfect. Give it a little more heat. 
I won't mention it until the very end of the show, but we got one lucky mom about to get one heck of a piece. I love it, I love it. So this is what Do I, I came Have up I with. met this person? You've met this person. I've met this person, okay. Yeah. Straight up. Take it slow. Okay. Gather one right more over. Of those. Okay. Remember, it might need to be a little bit bigger. What do you think? Bigger? To support the tree? I don't know how big the tree is. I'm putting it on a patty. Ah, I've got to. I like it. He's thought it through pretty darn good, guys. Remember, coming up, I think next week, our gathering point. point coffee mugs are going to be for sale on the website. Check this puppy out. It's a gathering point. You want to have coffee with us in the morning. I've already drank out of this puppy once. I had coffee out of it. And I'll tell you what, you guys, it works. It works? It does work for coffee, hot chocolate, eggnog, maybe even chili or soup. <laughs> I'm serious. I've eaten some soup out of a mug before. I've I been loving that chicken that. soup I made the other day with that spicy cayenne pepper in it. Tasty. I just want the broth to be in a cup and sip it down. It warms you up from the inside. Super tasty. What's everybody's favorite soup out there, guys? Put that in the feed. That's a great question. Lately, mine's been uh, chicken soup, but I used to hate chicken soup, and Michelle got me liking it. She gets me to like everything. I don't know how the hell she does it. She's, She's incredible. incredible. She doesn't care if I like it or not. She just keeps getting it and giving it to me and I'm like all of a sudden I'm like I think I just like chicken soup I don't know why it's like I think she's brainwashing me everybody maybe jeez yeah. but now I'm making chicken soup and loving it but I do like split pea me too a lot of ham in the there ham. throw a ham bone in there that's tasty mm. yeah okay, not so hot and brushed Remember that? brushed is really good look at that it's looking good look at the motion Look at Marcy's okay. hands. Straight She's just down. working them. No, you're so distracting. <laughs> I'm not distracting. Just don't tweak your fingers out. People are watching. Keep them really still. Oh, boy. Now look at that. I'm not as interesting right now. So for those of you who might have just tuned in, this is the two wooden planks that hold the Charlie Brown Christmas tree up. And that is no ordinary Christmas tree. It's Not a little ordinary. mini, uh, like, who is that chick who is from the Christmas show? Some Who Berry Who or something like Old that? Brown? Lou Little Who from Lou Boo Who. Who Boo. Who oh. Boo from uh, Whoville. I know who is that who it is? About. Yeah, well, doesn't she come down and little look at the. Cindy Lou Who. Cindy, Cindy Lou Who Boo from the Goo. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> I think Chris she, just broke. She <laughs> loves this little Charlie Brown Christmas tree. One time she came into the Charlie Brown program. It was like four o'clock after school. I think I was in like fourth grade. And I seen her hiding out behind Linus's dirty blanket. Truth. <laughs> you know what's the truth? I don't know much about Charlie Brown, honestly. What? I don't know a lot about Charlie Brown. They were not playing it in the house or showing me books or anything about Charlie Brown when I was growing up, so it's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now what are we going for? Now we're gonna start that tree. All right, we got the beautiful base. I'm gonna give it one more heat, tighten it up one more time. Right. Or she's going I to talk go out there the to the person who's okay. commissioning this piece, I'm just gonna say, this is gonna be a sweet one, R. <laughs> Long and sticky? Um, yeah. Cindy Ooh. Lou Boo Hoo Hoo Don't was cry. no more than two. When what happened? Hey, that kind of looks like planks. Look at that. Nice job. Looks good. Oh, it looks like it's wood definitely planks. Definitely like a little better than I had dreamt about last night. So I like it. 
Yeah, what color is the uh, That's perfect. The tree branch you're putting on there? Branches are three browns. This is just the tobacco, so it's got some kind of wood texture to it a little bit. All right, I like it. This I'm not going to get too crazy with because it is a scrawny tree. Cindy's got a lot of favorite soups. Chicken noodle, oyster stew, cream of broccoli, butternut squash, chili. She loves soup this wow. time of year, too. I wonder how many people down in Florida love soup, like when it's 90 out. That's a good question. Gazpacho, I love gazpacho when it's hot summer day. Plenty of cucumbers and tomato sauce. Maybe a wild shrimp in there once in a while. What? It's true. Well, we're going for tree branch action over here, folks. He's moving too quick for me to get. Our tech support has grown, everybody. Check it out. We got three. And multiplied. Triple tech support. Dun, dun, da, da. Spontaneous reproduction. And tug. Give it a tug. Uh, and you're doing the gravity. Note for me. So now we're starting to Take think about time. how this thing is going to be bent over, and it needs to have some strenuous stress in there because that ornament, remember the tree was standing up and glistening and looking all amazing, and it was just the only one Charlie Brown could find. He searched everywhere, and the only one left in the whole tree yard was this little, tiny, innocent little tree. And then they got it all set up, and then they hung the little ornament on it and boing it fell right over Woo, looking good starting to come along so now so we're gonna ready. get two branches on here all right here comes number one with the bends gotta bend it yeah i'm gonna get that bend a little further after i get one on the inside here yeah whenever you're right. ready ready yes Anybody having a big potluck with family for Christmas? I am, and I'm making <laughs> mac and cheese. I almost felt like you were waiting for someone to I was. On that one. I was like waiting for somebody to like bling in my head. <laughs> we are, we are, we are. Everybody is. Oh my God. I wish we could hear the. I'm hanging out with my cat. Action. What's happening, Joy's from Kingsport, Tennessee? Nice to have you on the gathering point. Oh, and Sandy, if you're watching and you hear me right now, I got the thing. It will go underneath my little Christmas tree. Oh, yeah. Marcy's sending some thanks out there. Thank you. Oh, I got, I got a texture. How about this question, guys? Who would celebrate Christmas on Christmas Eve? And when who you celebrated Christmas on Christmas Day? We had tons of brothers and sisters in my family, and our Christmas was on Christmas Eve, you guys. We would open up all of our presents, and then we would sit around and be way too tired from a crazy evening, and my mom would make us all go to bed, and one? put all of our gifts over in our little areas, and then Santa would come in the night. What would he do if you already got your gifts? Well, we had gifts from my parents, but we always, Santa always came and gave us a few more gifts in the morning because those were the Santa gifts. And hey, you know, we just wanted to make sure that we uh, didn't get any coal. Yeah. Leaves? Yep, give me one sec to just look over it and see what's going on. Oh, flip, flop. Okay. You better just look it over, Jake, and see what's going on. But it's looking <laughs> really good, guys. What I'm doing. Making that bonsai probably helped you out. Totally. Got this guy's looking this. pretty two-dimensional. He's pretty scrawny. He is two-dimensional. A two-dimensional tree. It is? Well, I saw it on a TV screen. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh. Christmas Eve. I mean, it's Christmas gotta have a front. Eve. I All like right. to open in one gift thing. That's cool. 
if you had some gifts from a bunch of people, but you could pick just one gift that you wanted to open. Well, you guys know that after tonight's show, we're not, are we gonna be talking to people on a live feed uh, before Christmas Thursday? Are you guys doing the experimental show, Jake? Yes, I'm making a bonsai. Oh boy, Jake's making a bonsai. You guys are not gonna wanna miss this. What time's the show start, around noon? <laughs> around noon? 12.30. 12.30 on Thursday, Jake's gonna be making a bonsai. What? folks and you want to be there and I'm sure the day yeah. before Christmas Eve most of you guys will have work off you can be chilling or you're working from home but I'd say treat yourself to a little eye candy and put the pressure on Jake we should try to have a world record with people watching Jake make a bonsai that would be pretty cool I love that pressure pressure makes glass blowers before start up on those green ones let's do the watermelon Watermelon? Yep. I'm not exactly sure why the tasty little slugs are over here looking pretty mischievous, guys. Maybe they're going to do something crazy like this. Don't look. Oh, it's a... Get him Check out of there. Out. He's hanging out in the coffee mug. Could you imagine it's that if so you stuck. filled it up with a drink and then he was just looking at you when you took a sip? I'm boiling. Look at that, Jake. He looks pretty good. Thanks. He fits right in there. <laughs> he does look pretty good. As long as he doesn't fill it up with slime. Those slugs are known for slipping and yeah, sliming around. It's tough to get slime out of your mug. For sure. I'm going to get it in my tea. That doesn't just taste funny for days. If I remember correctly, was there only the one ornament on here, weighing it down, or were there other ornaments on the tree? Uh, I think it was just the one. Just the just one. one. Confirmed. Thank you, Tech Support. All right, Tech Support's Ready? on it over there, you guys. Ready and raring to go at any miscellaneous Soup. question. They just pull the trigger and give us the answer. Unbelievable. So is this the, oh boy, this is the big boy. Liking it. Ugh. Oh, so this is some leaves, eh? I like it. These are like little pine needles. It only had like three or four leaves on it. My goodness, I was trying to straighten our Christmas tree out this morning. Er, early, early at the crack of dawn when I was tired and sleepy, and I got jabbed so many times. It was pretty ridiculous, guys. Hey, hey guess what, guys? But I did prevail. Got it straight. Guess what? Eh. It's officially overtime. It's already overtime? We yeah. got to do the horn. Uh, OT, everybody. That was the, the horn at Little Caesars Arena. Okay. Okay, we're going right on to the Charlie Brown tree right here with some more pine needles. Woo! Looking good. And remember, you guys, for those of you who just tuned in, we're not going to be doing a giveaway piece tonight. We're going to be picking one of our amazing Michigan Pines to give away as the giveaway next week on Tuesday. And Tuesday is going to be a nice show, folks. You're going to be able to have an opportunity to uh, purchase that set of candlesticks I made earlier. You're going to be able to see at the Anila Reveal uh, Tanya's beautiful Wreath, more and then we'll uh, Jake's corn. Christmas slug, Santa slug, looking good with a big old white beard. Ooh, this thing is looking good. Okay. Yes. Is that the spot you were thinking? Yes, I was looking right <laughs> at there, and he, he was going for one, and he was going for another spot, and he went back and forth, and I was just like, 
made my Superman laser rays sting right on there, and he stuck it right where I was thinking. I was like, whoa, I think our minds just connected. Uh, Red? Red, please. This looks like we got ourselves an ornament coming up. A Christmas ornament, folks. There it is. It's actually bending that way, so this, this one kind of makes it a little more 3D because it's behind the scenes. I like the 3D effect. And I don't even have to put those funny glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Robin? Two will be good. Nice to see ya. OT. Droopy. Soupy? No, not Snoopy. Ooh, Pammy went to some nice crazy <laughs> uh, event here, guys. Wrong it was uh, Christmas Lights Motorbike Run. Last Friday night to benefit the Ronald McDonald House. I like it. I remember maybe in the new year we're gonna start doing this again, but we used to bring in different nonprofits, you guys, and do a special piece for that nonprofit on the live feed with one of their guests from the organization, and uh, we would raise money for that piece for them. And I think that it's something cool that we could do just thinking about the Ronald McDonald House. We could call Ronald and see if we could get him out here. It'd be Good amazing. Guy, Ronald. Yeah, he's all right. I mean, his shoes are kind of big, but but if he came out here, he'd even bring you some chicken nuggets, Marcy. Because <laughs> you're the chicken nugget girl. I got the dinosaur chicken nuggets, man. <laughs> Ow. But Ronald McDonald does some, some hearty nuggets here. Look at this, guys. Got the ornament. You can start up on the base. Snow padded? Snow paddy base, please. Yes! Ooh, there it is. That is the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, guys. It's looking super sweet. The connection's amazing in between the tree to the base, the wood base. It looks like it's actually like... How'd it get so smooth? A little bit of this. A little bit of butter knife? No, it was the jacks. You might have got it so hot and creamy that it was buttery. It's buttery, that's for sure. Yeah. I can't wait to see the colors come out of this. When the green's popping and the red, especially. You think this will be enough I think everybody wait? else can't that's wait good. either because they're waiting for the annealer reveal. When's the annealer reveal happening, Jake? We're going to show them the products on Thursday. And, folks, to be honest, right now we're in a transition period of how we're doing things. And we've got the new year coming along, so we'll have some final answers for you on all that timing in the new year. Jake, so stick with us. isn't it correct that every person out there right now between Christmas and New Year's is in a transition period? Yes, but I'm going to focus on this for a second. Jeez. We're going to need, uh, you got diamonds. Here's your, this. Here's the torch. Jake's really working it. Here goes the patty, guys. Take it off. Jake's gonna give it a lovingly big squish. You see me over here working over here too. We see. I got the camera in the camera shot, everybody. This is pretty crazy. Marcy's like catching the place on fire. She's got a <laughs> rag on fire. She's out of control, folks. Baby, looking good. I gotta use the zoom, but I got this thing here. I gotta get a good zoom in on you guys. Hold on. And that ornament on the right right there, guys, is gonna be bright red. That's the one that made this poor little tree sink down into its own world famous glory. That thing is dangling. Whoop. It's a dangler. Oh, somebody asked which furnace would be the recycle furnace, guys. Jake and I were having a friendly little debate about that earlier today. Yes, nice we were. job, 
Har, you got yes. a really nice piece for a gift for your mom. Yeah, and that's right, it is R because that's Riker, folks. You all know Riker, he's kind of like the Glass Academy uh, man of the hour, and he's awesome, and he just got that for his mom. It was his idea. He's been maybe saving up the money for it. I don't know how he came across those kind of funds. He must be a hard worker. Paper route. Paper route. Yep, start but, them early. Uh, for Kelly, folks, for all of you that know, Kelly Robson's another huge patron of the arts around here, and that's from her son mm -hmm. to her for Christmas. That's pretty darn cool. That was yeah. so much fun to make, Raker. And Kelly, I hope you really enjoy it, okay? Yeah. And you guys, how'd you like all three mics? All three of us, Jake, Marcy, and myself, all mic'd up. We do have a fourth mic as well, too, don't we? Backup mic. A backup mic, just in case somebody trips and falls and their elbow crushes their mic. Something like that could happen. I hate to set the intention. I hate okay, to set that intention. Don't forget to send in your question. And Christine, you got the sweet mini disc gallo right here. You want it. It'll be coming to you. Reach out to us to claim your gift. Don't forget your gathering point coffee mug. It doesn't come with Mr. Sluggish. And there goes Marcy. So well, she's going to come over here and she's going to let me pick out because she took the camera ooh. from me. I get to pick out the tree. It does sound like, folks, even though it's Kelly's tree that she just got, tears are coming from Bridget's eyes. <gasps> Bridget, <laughs> did you stub your toe? Oh, Bridget. <laughs> All right, well, we're going for the pick. Marcy, All right, let's check it out. Come take a video of it because you're so good at the video. <laughs> Let's look around and see which one we want to give so away. So we're talking either we got this guy with the snow on it. She's just happens to not, she's like sticking it on the one that she thinks we should pick. <laughs> but Let's see the other ones. You got the green with the ornament. You got the deep green, emerald green with the granny apple spots. Let's get a vote from everybody out there, you guys, right now. Yep, and then we've got the last one though being crystal clear with the star on the base. The star one. Is that not an option? No, it's think? an option. It's good. Okay. Let's go ahead and install. So we got you guys gotta vote for us. Number two, number four, number five, or number eight. Which one of those is gonna be the giveaway for this Tuesday show, which is a very special show. What do you say we tally them up and we can let you all know next Tuesday when we have our show? Exactly. And one uh, of the four. Just a little extra work for tech support over there. Yeah, we <laughs> love it when we eyes. give tech support. <laughs> They're rolling their eyes, giving us thumbs up. <laughs> so oh that's it, God. guys. Remember, All I'm right. going to say them one more time. Number two, number four. Show them one more time. Number two, which is the green swirly of multiple colors. This one is really beautiful. You got the clear crystal fantasy tree with the either the shooting star that landed underneath it or the beautiful gold star that fell off into the snow next to it. We've got the traditional green Michigan pine with ornaments, red ornaments on it. They're beautiful. Or we've got the all year long spectacular number eight Michigan pine with snow on it. That isn't all about Christmas. It's just all about enjoying the outdoors. So let us know guys, okay? Jake, you want to give them the wrapper upper? I'll give them the wrapper upper folks. This has been another beautiful show, about 10 minutes of OT here and uh, this is the gathering point, folks. Spread it to your family, show it to your loved ones, purchase for the holidays, shop with the small businesses, you know the deal. Like I said, these trees are done after this week, live on the gathering point. We may make new ones next year, but they'll never be the same as this. We're always buying new color, we're always switching it up. They're always one of a kind, so. We had three beautiful custom orders tonight. We didn't get to the giveaway. You're voting on those four numbers for the giveaway. We did the warmer up for those two candlesticks. We're gonna finish the set tomorrow will be available on next Tuesday's show on the featured product table. That was show 142, folks. You know the e-news question. Thank you all, and have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Christmas and holiday season.